Are you up for a stroll down memory lane? Let's chat about a classic TV series from 1966 called That Girl. This show is full of funny, surprising, and even touching moments that will keep you hooked. Starring Marlo Thomas as a young aspiring actress trying to make it in New York City, That Girl follows her adventures, mishaps, and victories as she navigates life, love, and her career. It's a show that connected with audiences then and still does today. Now, can you remember a moment from that girl that really stuck with you? Maybe it was a scene that had you in stitches or perhaps a moment that pulled at your heartstrings. And here's something to ponder. Have you ever felt inspired or influenced by that girl in your own life? Share your personal stories and experiences in the comment entrance below. We'd love to hear from you. So if you're eager for more insights and nostalgia about this TV gem, keep watching this video. There's plenty more to discover about that girl and its timeless charm. Share your treasured memories and let's celebrate this classic together. That Girl, the 1966 TV series starring Marlo Thomas, broke new ground in its time. It followed with the journey of a young aspiring actress navigating life in New York City. The show was well received, praised for its portrayal of a modern, career-driven woman named Anne Marie. The show challenged traditional gender roles by depicting Anne Marie as independent and ambitious. Many viewers found her character inspiring, sparking conversations about women's roles in society. The success of the show led to spin-offs, merchandise, and adaptations, including comic books and novels. Marlo Thomas's portrayal of Anne Marie influenced future female leads in television and film. That girl's impact on popular culture can still be seen today, making it a timeless classic. In the final episode, the storyline originally planned for Anne and Donald to marry. However, Marlo Thomas refused, stating it would convey the message that a woman's primary aim in life should be marriage. Marlo Thomas, the main actress, remained close friends with her former co-star. When he experienced chest pains in early October of 1996, she advised him to seek medical help. Unfortunately, he passed away a few days later in an emergency room. His aneurysm could have been treated if diagnosed earlier. The survival rate for a burst aneurysm is only 20%. The train scene in the opening credits was filmed at Secaucus Junction in New Jersey. The footage was reversed to make it appear as if the train was heading towards Newark, resulting in the illusion of traffic moving backward on the New Jersey Turnpike. In Season 1, Episode 11, Anne considers the stage name Marie Brewster, combining her last name and hometown. Don Hollinger is dubbed Hollinger Toledo by Anne's father, suggesting he's from Toledo, Ohio. However, Don and his family are later depicted as being from St. Louis, Missouri. In the fifth season, more location shots, like Anne's apartment building exterior, were included. In My Sister's Keeper, Anne's sister Ter Thomas, brother Tony Thomas, and father Danny Thomas made appearances. These instances add depth to the series, providing insights into characters and settings. That girl aired in the 1960s and featured Anne as the main character. In each episode's pre-credit sequence, someone would refer to her as that girl, which became a running gag. Originally planned for just the pilot, it ended up being used in nearly every episode. Marlo Thomas, the lead actress, had family cameos on the show. Her father, Danny Thomas, frequently appeared, and one episode even included her sister Ter Thomas and brother Tony Thomas. In the unaired pilot, Anne's agent was named Donald Blue Sky, not Hollinger. Ted Bessel played this role, and he explained his Cherokee heritage as the source of his last name. Harold Good portrayed Anne's father, while Penny Santon played her mother. That TV series from the 1960s shares significant connections with The Dick Van Dyke Show. The father of its star, Danny Thomas, produced The Dick Van Dyke Show, while its creators served as head writers for The Dick Van Dyke Show. Both series were filmed at DeZillu Studios, sometimes featuring props from the other show. Additionally, some storylines from the Dick Van Dyke show were adapted for episodes of the TV series. The main character, Anne Marie, also known as That Girl, made her final appearance in an animated Saturday morning special called That Girl in Wonderland. It aired on ABC in 1973, two years after the live action series concluded. The lead actress and her co-star, who played her boyfriend, remained friends until his passing. She urged him to see a doctor when he complained of chest pains shortly before his death. That Girl was a TV series from the 1960s that garnered attention not only for its entertainment, but also for its behind-the-scenes dynamics. 
in That Girl, and Phil, a book published in 1991 by Desmond Athol, the romantic tale of Marlo Thomas and Phil Donahue unfolds. Viewers, over time, expressed dissatisfaction with the character named Donald and questioned why Don wasn't used instead. One potential title for the show was Miss Independent, a nickname bestowed would upon Marlo Thomas by Danny Thomas, reflecting her spirited independence. Anne-Marie, the main character in that girl, came from Brewster, New York. She became famous for playing the nice Anne-Marie on the show. Marlo Thomas, who played her, said she based the relationship between Anne-Marie and her dad Lou on her own with her dad Danny. The show quickly became popular because people liked the characters and story. Anne Marie's adventures in New York City, while following her dreams connected with viewers of all ages. Marlo Thomas did a great job playing her, and people loved her performance. The chemistry between her and the other actors made the show even better. It's a classic that fans still love today. That girl, starring Marlo Thomas, featured her wearing two sets of false eyelashes. The title of the show bore a resemblance to Batgirl, a character from the Batman series. Yvonne Craig, who played Batgirl, once recounted a moment where she misheard that girl as Batgirl while waiting for her series call. However, upon seeing Marlo Thomas, she realized her mistake. In an episode of The Simpsons, Marge says to Homer, Well, you may not look like Ted Bessel, but you're just as nice. Ted Bessel directed episodes of The Tracy Ullman Show, where both Marge and Homer's voice actors, Julie Kavner and Dan Castellaneta, worked as part of the live-action supporting cast. In the late 60s, a beloved TV series called That Girl captured the hearts of many. It followed with the story of Anne, a young woman living in New York City. In the pilot episode, Anne and her boyfriend Don both worked at the Seagram building and lived in apartment 4D, where many memorable scenes took place. As the show went on, people grew attached to the characters and their relatable experiences. But tragedy struck after the show ended in March 1972. Lou Parker, who played Anne's father, passed away from cancer just before his 62nd birthday. Fans were deeply saddened by his loss. Despite its short time on air, that girl left a lasting impression. It showed what a young woman striving for independence, which resonated with many viewers. It became more than just a show. It inspired people and showed with the power of storytelling. Looking back, that girl reminds us of the importance of relatable characters and their journeys. Even though many years have passed, it still holds a special place in the hearts of those who watched it. And that's why it's worth remembering even today. Best remembered for his role as Donald Hollinger in That Girl, starring Marlo Thomas, he remained friends with her until his death. They discussed a feature film remake of the series where the main characters, now 25 years older, would meet again and fall in love. The magazine Donald worked for was called Newsview Magazine, the train in the opening sequence was shot at Secaucus Junction, New Jersey. It was filmed from the back of the train as it headed northwest, then reversed to appear as if it was heading towards Newark. This made the traffic on the New Jersey Turnpike appear to move backwards.